of my freshman year in high school teaching gymnastics over 40 years ago. At that time, it was easier for high schoolers to be hired. Now, many of these entry-level positions are being filled by adults who need to hold down multiple jobs to make ends meet. And so when I bought the gym, I made a commitment to hire teenagers to train them to coach, not just to be counselors in training or assistants to the real coaches, but to be the sole teachers responsible for the health and well-being of their students. And so what started as a nostalgic policy in order to try to give high schoolers the same opportunities that I was given has propelled my small business into becoming one of the largest gym clubs in the country with over 125 employees and half of them are high schoolers. It has benefited not only the employees but our clients and our company as well. Now, the obvious advantage to going to work for anyone is earning money, but there are some other benefits to the employees that are worth mentioning, like being a productive member of the workforce. And so at our gym, we pride ourselves on training our teenagers to be good employees, to arrive early to work, to be prepared, to be effective communicators, to understand that a paycheck will never materialize until they fill out a W-4 and an I-9 and present some form of government-issued ID. Every one of our employees has survived through a three-hour orientation meeting that has expounded on the pertinent mandates of employment law as set forth by our great state and my lawyer. They have participated in annual reviews. They have attended quarterly staff meetings. They have, as far as I know, read my bi-monthly memos. But I would be remiss if I didn't mention the one employment requirement particular and unique to teenagers, that of obtaining a work permit. Now, the process of obtaining a work permit is not for the faint of heart, but it is an excellent indication of whether an applicant can follow a multi-step procedure. First of all, the high schooler needs to find the work experience office at their school. Then they need to pick up the application. They take it home, they fill out the top, their parents sign the bottom, and then they bring it back to their employer. That would be me. And then I sign the middle saying that, yes, I understand and I, I, I will comply with child labor laws. And then they need to take that completed application back to the work experience office. And this is where a lot of teenagers get a little bit lost because, see, the application is not the permit and the permit is not the application. And so they need to return yet a third time to that work experience office to pick up their newly minted work permit and bring it back to their employer, still me. And bonus round, this process has to happen every year that the employee is enrolled in high school and under the age of 18. Now, being a good employee is just one benefit. There are some specific perks to learning to coach gymnastics, not the least of which is that the required uniform involves wearing sweatpants. But also, there is the increase in communication skills because talking in front of a group is tough, especially when your audience are preschoolers. You see, faced with six little four-year-olds staring at you, just demanding that you entertain them can be intimidating. But our high school coaches within their first year have not only mastered teaching those four-year-olds, they have also become so proficient that they can alter their presentation style according to many different ages and skill levels and speak to every child with care and compassion, which brings us right into the benefits to the clients. And it's pretty straightforward. Most successful classrooms start with a positive relationship between the students and their teachers. And what do our students want? They want a fun and happy coach. And so they feel like, usually, that our younger staff members are way, way, way cooler than their older count counterparts. And most of our young staff members only work one day a week, so they very rarely suffer from teacher burnout. They're excited to come to work. And we like to hire those cheerleaders and the drama kids, because even on their worst day, they are happy on command. 
Yes, and then teaching. It has this sort of secret, magical, cathartic element to it that makes all of life's annoyances just kind of come into perspective. You see, even on your worst day, the day that your parents are mad at you and you failed a test and your love interest broke up with you, it's all secondary to the safety of those small beings in front of you. And so after you've taught your shift and left the gym, you realize that your troubles are actually manageable. You can go talk to your parents and they're gonna forgive you. And with your newly improved communication skills, you might be able to convince that teacher to give you a retake. And did that love interest really understand how fabulous you were? Well, I don't know. But I do know who does see your true worth. Those six-year-olds that you've been teaching, they have fallen in love with you because you are a happy and fun coach. And because they have fallen in love with you, they are gonna work hard for you. And when they work hard for you, they actually get better. And when they get better, they fall in love with the sport. And then they beg their parents to re-enroll them year after year. And their parents are thrilled because their child is engaged in an activity, a physical activity that involves no screens. And so they happily pay the tuition, and then the income to the company increases, and that can be turned around into higher wages for those employees to inspire yet another budding gymnast. And so now this talk of, of client satisfaction, it seamlessly segues us into benefits to the company. It's really Econ 101. You see, the coaches are cool, and so the children are happy, and the students stay, and the parents pay, and the company grows. But arguably, this equation will work if you have quality staff of any age. So what is the particular advantage to hiring teenagers? Well, first of all, they usually haven't worked anywhere else. And so I can train them to teach according to the tenets of my gymnastics club. Now, any inexperienced coach is gonna need time. Time that we pay them to become prepared to take over their first classes. But if you give them the sufficient time so that they feel competent and confident and comfortable when they take over those first classes, then they also feel successful. And a successful teacher is liable to stay, which buys me almost three to four years of continuous employment from that high schooler while they finish school. Now this has created an almost unheard of situation in our industry because most gym clubs struggle daily to find quality staff. But at my gym, most days, we're overstaffed. The other real advantage to teenagers is that their schedule fits perfectly in with our high enrollment times. You see most parents want their children's activities to happen between 3.30 and 6.30 on weekdays and weekend mornings. But not that many adults are excited about working just a three hour shift. But if you are 14 or 15 years old, then you legally can only work three hours on a day that you attend school. And while most adults are not that thrilled with working on weekends, that overtaxed teenager, they are so grateful that you have that Sunday shift you're gonna offer them because that is actually the only day that they can consistently commit to a line of classes. And now they get to add job to their college application. Now, not every high schooler is a suitable applicant. And so we need to be able to assess them. And that starts with the interview. You can't ask a 14 year old about their work experience. They don't have any work experience. But what I do ask them is if they have any interactions at all with young children. Have they babysat? Have they volunteered? Do they have younger siblings? What I wanna know is do they understand that young children are sometimes bizarrely sticky? that they, at any moment, without warning, bodily fluids can come spewing out of them. I also want to know if they understand the commitment it's going to take to do this job, the time commitment. You see, we are very reasonable about the parameters we ask for these overachieving high schoolers. We insist that they work just one 
three hour shift a week the entire school year. But here's the clincher, that one three hour shift has to happen at the same time on the same day every week because our students deserve consistent coaches. And so be wary of that short-sighted teenager, the one who really wants the job, but when you kind of push them on their activities, they do admit that we're gonna have to work around competitive cheer, and actually that season's gonna slide straight into competitive diving. And oh, did I mention that I have choir on Wednesdays? And actually, if I can keep my head above water with those three AP classes I'm taking, well, I'm gonna try out for that school musical, but I'm pretty sure I can hold this down too. And on the other end of the spectrum, what you have is a student who can't handle their schedule at all, right? I don't want mom calling when I have an employee who's late to work or not able to come at all. I didn't actually hire mom. What I want is I want to be confident that that teenage coach has the wherewithal to make a good decision when the two children go bashing into each other on the floor. A decision that will be good for the good of the children, not freeze, panic, and look for their own mother. And so I ask that all communication, I insist that all communication happens exclusively with the high schooler. And here, let me give you a tip for those of you who are high schoolers in the audience and actually thinking about applying for a job, any job, with anybody. Set up your voicemail. So I understand that your generation has perfected the art of never speaking on the phone. But as an employer, I actually like to call for that first interview. Oh, and as a second pro tip, if you give that employer your email, you need to check it regularly, like daily. Okay, so what's going on with the 22-year-olds, right? My theory is completely based in speculation. It is a combination of my personal musings and anecdotal evidence. But here's what I think. The college experience, especially the college experience for those people who go away, who are paid to go away. They have someone at home who is paying their tuition, room, and board. Those fortunate, lucky students, they have four years of this sort of self-centered existence, right? They are gone, are those negotiations with their siblings about sharing a car. There is no need to inform anyone if they will be present at dinner. There is no reason to communicate their whereabouts at 2 a.m. They eat, they sleep, they study, they go to class beholden only to themselves. And then they graduate at 22. And this blissful existence evaporates and is replaced with the pressures of paying rent and finding a job. And some of them crash and burn spectacularly, especially those who treat the workplace as they have treated their college classroom, thinking that attendance is optional. You see, at my gym, the last employee who just disappeared, I'm talking about just stopped coming to work, no phone call, no email, no text, no response to our phone calls, our emails, our texts. They happen to be 22. Now, the other thing about college graduates is they have this sort of entitled air about them, right? They, they want to teach the classes that will fulfill them, not the classes I actually need covered. Also, they feel that they deserve they deserve extra compensation, not because they have any experience at all, no, because they earned that degree in creative writing, yes. But probably the most egregious trait of the 22-year-old is when they treat teaching as if it were just a stepping stone to their real job. Now, it might very well be a stepping stone, but if they make abrupt and drastic decisions without any consideration for the consequences to my students, it irks me. You see, we had this employee once. They decided to upheaval their entire life to move in with a love interest. They quit their graduate program in Southern California and tried to transfer to a campus in Northern California. They quit their job at a gym in Southern California and they applied and were hired at our gym. Good coach. We gave them 20 hours of work a week. And then on just the second day 
of our school year classes. They left their shift at 5.30 with a see you later, have a good night, and they arrived home. And then an argument ensued. Now, I don't actually know what happened, but what I do know is by 7.30, that person had their car packed and they were moving back to LA with just an apology text saying, well, I won't ever be at work again, thanks. Right? And they were 22. Now, I'm not saying that every 22-year-old makes these impulsive decisions or has this air of entitlement about them, but I am saying that almost no 14-year-olds approach their first job with this kind of attitude. And so I stand by my statement. I will hire a 14-year-old freshman in high school over a 22-year-old college graduate any day. Thank you.